Hey guys, archaeologists found an ancient wire in the Chandi Kimpulan temple in Indonesia. Yes, this is the actual picture of that high quality copper alloy wire found during the excavation. And initially they thought it was an ornamental ring. But upon closer examination, they were shell shocked because it was not a ring, it was a wire just like the electrical wires we use today. Archaeologists confirm that this is about 1,200 years old. The archaeology report published by the Indonesian government actually mentions the words wire made of copper alloy. How long are we going to pretend that all these ancient objects are meaningless and were used for superstition? What is more fascinating to me is how they stored the wire. This is just like how we store the wires. We keep wires circled up to save space. This was found inside the airtight stone box buried under the lingam's base. So they cannot store it like this. They had to make it into a circle to save space. In my previous video, I showed you they found two objects. There was a stone plate with gold and silver foils and a box with various other objects. Archaeologists found them during the excavation of this temple. As you can see, all these objects start to look like parts of a complex machine. These thin metal plates look like fan blades of a modern rotor, right? After discovering these weird objects, archaeologists started to dig into the dirt of the entire temple premises and found fragments of thin rectangular iron plates. They called them iron spatulas in the archaeological report. And they also found more thin slivers of silver. These were definitely more clues leading to something else, but experts could not put them together to see the full picture and understand why they were finding these random materials. But as they excavated around the lingam carefully, they found something placed on a small pedestal. Yes, it is an earthen pot placed exactly under the spout of the base. This is not the norm in most ancient temples. You don't usually find this setup. They also found other pots nearby. But inside these pots, archaeologists found a strange organic material which was surprisingly intact. What was it? It was rice husk. This is truly extraordinary because it proves that they were doing something very strange. In ancient times, rice husk was usually added to hold things firmly in place. It acted as a natural placeholder. It is soft and slimy when you first add water to it, but when you put an iron plate or a silver foil inside the pot, the husk will become rock hard and make sure they won't move. But why would such a setup be needed at all? To generate electricity. Yes, this is exactly what they were doing here. The ancient builders were generating electricity from the lingam. But this is nonsense, right? It is pseudoscience to guess that these items found here could somehow make electricity. Real science involves demonstrable evidence. Unless you take a pot, put some husk, put iron and silver plates and generate actual electricity, nobody should believe this, right? Challenge accepted. So here is an earthen pot just like what we found in the Chandi Kimpulan temple. And this is rice husk, and I'm going to fill 25% of the pot with husk. Here's a silver plate, and I will stick it in the rice husk. And here is a piece of iron, and I will stick it here. 
let's use copper wires just like what we found in the temple to check if we get electricity via the voltmeter. But I'm shocked because there is no electricity, right? Why? Because to get electricity, we need the power of the lingam. Without the lingam, we cannot create such power. So what do we do now? We have recreated this lingam as well. And let me place it in such a way that the spout is directly above the pot. For thousands of years, people have been pouring water on the lingam. This is a well-known ritual to Hindus, so let's do that. Let me pour water on top of the lingam to unleash the power. And look, just like magic, we see electricity rising in the pot. It will go up and stabilize. We are getting more than 0.5 volts of electricity. This is what they were doing in this ancient temple in Indonesia. Everything I've shown you so far is found in the temple itself. I've not added anything extra. The lingam, the pot under the lingam, the husk, the silver plate, the iron plate, the copper wire, everything except the voltmeter, which merely shows you how many volts is produced. Everything else is found in this temple itself. So think about it. Is it possible that they were generating electricity 1,200 years ago? If so, what were they doing with this electricity? In case you did not understand what is going on, or if you think I'm hiding something inside the pot, this is pure science. The silver and iron plates act as positive and negative terminals, and the water is acting as a medium to move the ions, and electricity is naturally produced. Just so you know, you don't need the water from a lingam, electric current, will flow just fine with any regular water. But remember, we are talking ancient history about 1,200 years ago. This was a time when science and spirituality were not considered separate. They were intertwined at that time. With just two pots like this, we can easily make a light bulb glow today, and we can also fire up other gadgets. But how did ancient builders use this electricity 1,200 years ago? Did they even know that it was electricity? Or did they think it was the magical power of Lord Shiva? Today, most physiotherapists recommend a procedure called electrotherapy, which sends low-volt electricity into your body. It heals many conditions. Wikipedia shows a dozen different conditions that can be treated. And you can buy a variety of these devices that deliver a small dose of electricity into your body. Many of these machines deliver such low volt and low amp electricity that it is impossible to feel anything. If you wear some of these devices, you may not even realize that the device is on, just like no one would have felt the 0.5 volts hitting them during ancient times. Now, I've seen people using their tongues to tell if a 2-volt battery is dead or alive, but I can never tell the difference because it's such low voltage. But even though you cannot feel much, physiotherapists confirm that it will heal you if you have repeated sessions of electrotherapy, even with small doses of electricity. They call this procedure microcurrent therapy. Now, the question is, did ancient builders also practice such electrotherapy techniques to heal themselves? Today, what do devout Hindus do 
when they were mentally depressed or have a physical condition like chronic pain. They go to a temple and do a variety of rituals for 40 days in hopes of getting healed. Is it possible that the ancient Hindus of Indonesia also performed such rituals? If a person was depressed or was in chronic hand pain, for example, the priest would have asked to put his hands inside the spot, and the holy water from the lingam would have flowed into the pot and delivered a small dose of electricity. If this person underwent the same treatment, the same ritual, for 40 days, this could have a significant impact on his body and his mind. And he might get healed because he's getting electrotherapy for 40 straight days. Is it possible that the ancient people of Indonesia were using electrotherapy 1,200 years ago? Believe it or not, something similar called the electric bath was practiced about 250 years ago. And who popularized this therapy? Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers of the United States. He wrote about this form of healing. And of course, this happened only 250 years ago. So at this time, they had enough technology to amp up or volt up the electricity to a higher degree. According to this technique, a patient with depression or pain would sit under a shower and be delivered doses of electricity. And Ben Franklin noted that the patients got better after the procedure. You may have heard of galvanization, a procedure named after the Italian scientist Louis Galvani, but this electric bath procedure was called Franklinization after Benjamin Franklin himself. As usual, many people criticized this procedure as pseudoscience and quackery at that time, but today he would have been proud to see various electrotherapy devices being used in mainstream hospitals. But there is something we could not decode so far. Why did they hide this stone plate under the lingam? Why did they put gold and silver in alternating cavities? Was it a high-tech ancient device? Is it possible to recreate this ancient technology? I will do this in my next video. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.